Yeah. Please fill me with the Ruach HaKodesh, that I may speak your written words with boldness to those who listen. I ask all these things in Yeshua the Mashiach's name. Amen. Before we start today, we'll read the Shema. Children of Yahweh, pay careful attention and respond. Yahweh is our power and authority. Yahweh works in unity with himself. And you shall act upon your love to Yahweh, your power and authority, with your thoughts and mind, with your entire body, and with all the muchness that you have. Amen. It just keeps getting better each time. Today we'll read Mark 11. As they were approaching Jerusalem near Beit Pig and Beit Anaya, by the mountain of olives, Yeshua sent two of his Talmudim with these instructions. Go into the village ahead of you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find a coat, a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it, and he will send it here right away. They went off and found a colt in the street tied in a doorway and they untied it. The bystander said to them, Why are you doing? What are you doing? Untying that colt. They gave the answer Yeshua had told them to give, and they let them continue. They brought the colt to Yeshua and threw their robes on it, and he sat on it. Many people carpeted the road with their clothing, while others spread out green branches which they had cut in the fields. Those who were ahead of the those who were ahead and those behind shouted, Please deliver us! Blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh! Blessed is the ki- blessed is the coming of the kingdom of our father David! You and the highest of heaven, please deliver us! Yeshua entered Jerusalem, went into the temple courts, and took a good look at everything. But since it was now late, he went out with the twelve to Beit Anaya. The next day, as they came back from Beit Anaya, he felt hungry, spotting in the distance a fig tree and leaf. Spotted in the distance a fig tree and leaf. He went to see if he could find something on it. When he came up to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it wasn't fig season. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his Talmudim heard what he said. On reaching Jerusalem, he entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were carrying out business there, both the merchants and their customers. He also knocked over the desks of the money changers, upset the, upset the benches of the pigeon dealers, and refused to let anyone carry merchandise through the temple courts. Then, as he taught them, he said, Isn't it written in the Torah, My house will be called a house of prayer for all the peoples? but you have made it into a den of robbers. The head Kahanim and the Torah teachers heard what he had said and tried to find a way to do away with him. They were afraid of him because the crowds were utterly taken by his teaching. When evening came, they left the city. In the morning, as the Talmudim passed by, they saw the fig tree withered all the way to its roots. Kepha remembered and said to Yeshua, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has dried up. He responded, Have the kind of trust that comes from God. Yes, I tell you that whoever does not doubt in his heart, but trust, but trust that what he says will happen can say to this mountain, Go and throw yourself into the sea. It will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, trust that you are receiving it and it will be yours. When you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your offenses. They went back into Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple courts, there came to him the head Kohenim, the Torah teachers, and the elders. And they said to him, What shmika do you have that authorizes you to do these things? Who gave you this shmika? authorizing you to do them. 
Yeshua said to them, I will ask you just one question, answer me, and I will tell you by what shmika I do these things. The immersion of Yochanan, was it from heaven or from a human source? Answer me. They discussed it among themselves. If we say from heaven, he will say, then why don't you believe him? But if we say from a human source, they were afraid of the people. For they all regarded Yochanan as a genuine prophet. So they answered Yeshua, We don't know. Then he replied, I won't tell you by what shmika I do these things. Well, first, which I forgot yesterday, um, let's see if I did truly forget. Yes, I did. So I forgot um, that Yeshua is always looking back at the Torah, the Old Covenant, and uh, pulling from there. So today I won't forget. So the please deliver us is actually from Psalm 118.25. So Psalm 118.25. There it was. 118.25. Please, Yahava, save us. Please, Yahava, rescue us. Is there, please deliver us. And then blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahava. Psalm 118, 26, the very next verse. Blessed, he, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahava. We bless you from the house of Yahava. And then again, please deliver us is in verse 25. And then he says, my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Isaiah 56, 7. Isaiah 56, 7. Oh, there it was. Jeremiah, Isaiah, what is it? Oh, passing it. Isaiah 56, 7. Not in Bible drill. 56, 7. I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Where was his house of prayer? Oh, there they were. They were, the house of prayer is on the temple mount in Jerusalem. I'll be showing you that shortly exactly where that's at. A den of robbers. Jeremiah 7.11. Well, that's easy if you're from Dallas. Jeremiah 7.11. Do you regard this house which bears my name as a cave for bandits? I can see for myself what's going on, says Yahava. For sure can. I think that might be it. That's it. And what can we learn today after reading Mark 11? How can we love Yahava? We can listen and obey exactly what Yeshua orders us to do. When, or, when others ask us why you obey, Yeshua, tell them why. Ask Yeshua to please deliver you. Deliver is, uh, is the word saved, so it should be clear. Blessed is Yeshua who comes in the name of Yahava. Yeshua has power over everything here on earth. Yeshua desires spiritual fruit in your life. Therefore, produce spiritual fruit. Yeshua does not like people doing business of the world in his temple. Maybe he doesn't want what is unholy to be in a holy place. He wants the set apart to be in a set apart place. Yeshua is, has something about money. Um, the Bible is very clear. It talks about money and it's the love of money that is the root of all evil, not money itself. So it's what they were doing in the temple, a den of thieves. Maybe they were trickery, um, not they were triggering. Maybe they were deceiving others in uh, their weights and scales in the Temple Mount. And that's why he was kicking them out. 
Um, so ba basically, do not be controlled by your money or the desires of all those things that comes with money. I think he wants you to be controlled by the Ruach of Kodesh. It seems that is very bad from the, his perspective. Um, yeah, a lot of people fall into traps, pride being the biggest of them. Yeshua states that his house is a house of prayer, not a den of robbers. Yeshua seems to curse whatever it doesn't produce fruit. However, it can be inferred that Yeshua blesses those who do produce fruit. Therefore, find out what producing fruit means and do it. Yeshua encourages us to have trust that you can only s have trust that you can only get from God. So the trust that he's looking for only comes from his Father. You got to ask this way. Ask God for trust and be a vessel that obeys in order to get this trust you are requesting. Also, do not doubt in your heart. Then ask in prayer, trust that you are receiving it, and it will be yours. Also, forgive anyone if you, if you have anything against them. For those math-minded, logic-minded, that's a pretty unique formula in order to gain trust. How can we love others? Teach those you love about the good news learned from Mark 11. Produce spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Maybe now you can see why that is one of the four pillars that I'd like to emphasize on each chapter of the New Covenant with Yeshua. It is such a big deal to produce spiritual fruit. Huge in the kingdom of God. Bear one another's burdens, also equally huge. All these things did love God, love others as you love yourself, produce spiritual fruit, bear one another's burdens. I believe if you build your house on those four cornerstones, and you read through the entire Bible, which we will do next year. Read through the entire Bible. I'm just going to read through the New Testament in about 70 chapters or so. Actually, it's 154 chapters of the Old Covenant. Read through all of them with that as your, your mindset, your frame of mind. How can I love God? How can I love others? How can I produce fruit? How can I bear one another's burdens? I think if you did that, with a laser focus, I believe that when you get to heaven, you might just hear what Paul heard about, well done, thy faithful and good servant. That is my goal because it was Paul's goal. My name's Paul. And I really think it should be your goal as well, but I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to do it and lead by example and really encourage you to do it by leading by example, from my example. I hope that that makes sense. And each time we hit on these points and read over it, like today was huge on producing fruit. What happens if fruit isn't produced versus uh, fruit being produced in your life? Um, all that ties together. I pray that you will ask the Ruach HaKodesh, you will ask the Holy Spirit, the set-apart breath, to lead you in his word and find out these truths for yourself so you can know it for yourself. He will teach you everything he wants you to know. Bear one another's burdens. Have you thought creatively of ways you can bear your fellow brother's burdens, your sister's burdens, employee, employer, 
teacher, your student, your doctor, your nurse, your client, your business partner, your neighbor across the hall, whoever it may be, think of ways and don't stop with just thinking. Do it. Act on it with intention and purpose. See it through. Ask God to help you. It's what he wants you to do. I believe. End with the Arionic Blessing. Because it's awesome. Oh, is that it? Yahweh will kneel before you presenting gifts, and he will guard you with the hedge of protection. Yahweh will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh will lift up the wholeness of his being and look upon you and will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Amen.